What is a legacy? It can be a positive thing that is celebrated, or it can be something negative that you would like to keep under wraps. We all have negative things in our past, every single one of us, things that we regret, things that we wish we could change. Maybe it's the moment when we let our anger get the best of us. Maybe it was a time when we cheated, stole, said something mean, or made a joke at the expense of another person. Maybe it was an embarrassing moment that others won't let us forget. As a society, we have a very negative legacy. It's this thing called sin. It's the reason our planet is dying. It's what makes rich corporations want more when they clearly have enough. It's what makes us prideful about how we are perceived by others. It's the ugliness behind every good intention thing that ever went horribly wrong. For Christians, it's different though. You see, God sees the reality of our sin and he can't have anything to do with it. And yet he chooses to do something about it. He chose to do something about it. Our past is something we can celebrate because our future is completely changed. We don't have to get bent out of shape when our perfect plans don't work out, when the ugly things behind the curtain of our well-intentioned plans go south. It's pride. It's, pride is this thing that is both great and terribly harsh at the same time. Pride is why our world is so divided. When we say, my way is right, so your way has to be wrong. And while I believe that when it comes to salvation, there is absolutely only one right way, that doesn't mean that everything else in life is so right or wrong. Life is colorful because when God created you, he made someone unique in every way. And he did that billions of times over. So diversity, seeing the world differently, is something to be celebrated. But diversity doesn't mean sin. Diversity doesn't mean that truth is relative. Diversity means that our legacy is colorful when we all live out our purpose in God. Diversity means that everyone's gifts and talents come together to form an amazing body with Jesus as the head. The thing that connects us, unites us, and completes us is God through Jesus. This means that in order to live, we have to be open to change. In order to live, we have to put that pride to death. We have to be willing to repent when it turns out that our ways are not lining up with God's ways. This was the early church. They gave it all up for Jesus. They had everything in common. They provided for each other's needs. They met together in community daily, and they spread the word because that's what God was asking them to do. Then in walks Stephen. He's bold, he's passionate. He looks like an angel, literally. Read it for yourselves in chapter 6 of Acts. The pride-filled people of the world, they hate him for it. They see his angelic face, they hear his words from God, and they hate him for it. He gives a rundown of this rich legacy that the Jewish people have that highlights their ultimate reliance on God and the beauty of that, but then points out that they were sinful in that. While God was faithful, and Jesus came to fulfill all that the Bible was pointing to and all that we are incapable of completing ourselves. You see religious Jews at this time, they were prideful. Just like we are. They were prideful about their temple that they had built for God. About the legacy of Moses and the law. The heritage of the leaders before them which I would say weren't necessarily bad things. These are things to be celebrated, but they were the things that were pointing to God. They were not the God in and of themselves. So what is your God? For me, when I was your age, it was sports. It was performing when I was in high school, awards that I would win, the praise of people, my peers, or the crowds, moments of glory, music, What's the thing that you take the most pride in? For Stephen, it was Jesus. And he gave it all for Jesus. He gave his life and loved those who killed him for it. Because he wanted everyone to know the love of Jesus and he was willing to die in order to make that 
happen and to make that known. What are you willing to die for? Maybe family, fast cars, your significant other, your mom or your dad, your best friend, your favorite sports team, or your puppy? In Acts 7, 54 through 60, we read the end of Stephen's story. Now when they had heard all these things, they were enraged. And they ground their teeth at him, but he, he, Stephen, full of the Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice. They stopped their ears and they rushed together at him. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. I'm willing to die for a few things in my life, for my family, for my wife. And if there was an opportunity, I, I would venture to say that I would step into that and, and die for others, put, put my life on the line. But one thing I want to be sure you understand, when it comes to Jesus, I want to step into that opportunity given the chance to die for him the way that Stephen did and not for myself but truly so that others might live